hi folks. E chip out here at location two uh, came out to, among other things, uh, do a little uh, work on the engine compartment here for the backhoe. You can see we got a lot of the dirt cleaned out, and uh, so we've got to power wash this thing. We got a free power washer uh, from a Craigslist uh, seller uh, who couldn't get the thing started. She decided to give it to us, so uh, we were glad to take it, glad to use it. Uh, all it needed was a uh, $10 carburetor, so I ordered a new carburetor, put it on, started right up. Anyway, um, today we're going to blast the inside of this thing. I don't think we'll get to the outside today, but we've got to get the inside of this cleaned up so we can put the engine back in. Uh, so, you know, we'll clean up this area over here by the uh, hydraulic reservoir and the hydraulic uh, valves for the loader. Uh, just covered with a bunch of gunk, so we'll get this cleaned up as best we can. Folks, it's E Chip and Robber out in. I wish I could call it the shop, but it's pretty much become a graveyard slash wasteland now. <laughs> I, what, what should we call it? The the current center of disappointment. <laughs> Black hole of Calcutta. I don't even know if that's a good thing to say or not. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> uh, the uh, ground zero for disappointment. We have been wanting to get a video out to you on the backhoe engine for some time. We have had an ongoing saga with this Continental 244, F244 engine. And uh, I thought we'd do an update on it because I'm sure there are some of you out there who are curious about what's going on. Well, uh, as we were, as we began to put the engine back together, I could not get the crank to turn. It was just too tight. And I couldn't figure out why, because there seemed to be enough clearance using plastic gauge and things like that uh, to check it with the new bearings. But I just could not get the crank to turn except by using a long breaker bar and really using a lot of power to, to turn it. That's not good. That's not what you want. So we broke down and took it to a local machinist. Uh, he went ahead and turned the crank down. Uh, to uh, 30 thousandths under bore. Uh, we bought a new, another new set of bearings for 30 thousandths under bore and uh, brought it back. And while he was at it, he went ahead and shaved the deck and the head just to make it pretty. Uh, brought it back, put it back together, and we still had this crank problem. It just would not turn. Uh, again, used plastic gauge to check it. All the clearances are perfect. We just can't... And it seemed like the wear on the bearings was occurring at the parting line, where the two bearing halves meet. This area is called the parting line. So took it back to the machinist, and apparently, we don't know how or when or why, but apparently this block has become sort of curved like this. You'll remember in a prior video when we were measuring the deck uh, of the engine and also the head, the head was concave. The deck was convex, uh, and we mentioned to you at that time I thought it was normal. We had no idea how far out it was, though. Um, it, it appears, not sure, and the machinist isn't totally sure either, but it appears that the whole block was that way a little bit, which means that when you turn it upside down and lay the crankshaft into it, the two center saddles to hold the crankshaft are normal and have normal clearances and spin freely. The two outer ones on the front and back of the engine 
they were the ones that were impinging on the crank and not letting it turn freely. The block is sort of sloped like this, and it's pinching on the crankshaft on the front and rear bearing areas. So what they're going to do is line hone uh, those saddles and caps on the bottom of that block to make sure that that crankshaft sits uh, perfectly and so that it turns appropriately because uh, it should not be that tight to turn. And I expect it back any day, but in the meantime, I've been playing around with something else. This is the steering column that came off the backhoe. Um, you may remember from a prior video, this was nothing but a big piece of rust. This shaft, when we pulled it out of the column, uh, was just one solid piece of rust. And we pulled it apart. Um, there was nothing left of the bearings at all. Um, there were no bearings left in this. It should have been a, a, a bearing race here and a bearing race on the other end. But they were non-existent. They had long ago rusted away. Luckily, I found uh, a source for new bearings because I could not, looking at the old Dynaho uh, parts manual, I could not figure out where uh, this thing came from because this part was sold as one unit. Um, the individual bearing races were not. But I found a speed shop in Texas online that sells uh, steering column bearings for a 1961-62 Corvette, which has the same size column and the same size steering shaft, so I was able to replace it with new bearings, and it turns normally, it's going to be just fine. So that part's done anyway. But uh, we, so we still have quite a bit to do. As you can see here, we have uh, the uh, connecting rods ready to go with their new bearings in them. And a whole bunch of other parts ready to, you know, to reassemble the engine. This will be our third attempt at reassembling this engine and getting it going again. Um, one nice uh, thing about this is that the timing gears in the engine being older, there's a little bit more valve lash than, you know, than new. And so um, by, by honing uh, those caps and saddles on the inside of the engine, it moves the crank uh, gear up just a little bit where the valve lash uh, on the timing gear is a little tighter, so that'll be nice. And uh, you know, hopefully we'll get it back here soon, we'll be able to hear this engine purr for a change. But uh, it has been um, a very challenging project, this Continental F244. Finding parts for it was tough. Although they're out there, they can be had if you're willing to search. And um, it's just been tough getting this thing back together, getting it apart. Uh, it's, it appears as the easy part. <laughs> getting it back together where it'll run is a little more difficult. What are your thoughts on this, Robert? <clears throat> it's a long, long, long project. So that's our, um, I guess, current information on the backhoe. And, of course, we'll get back to you when we're able to do more on it and can actually show you something. But the thing's been in the machine shop on and off, so it's been tough. But thanks for sticking with us. Please uh, hit like, subscribe, and share. And uh, we'll look for you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching.